Hey everybody, today I want to talk about divs and what divs are and how you can creatively use them in order to make your canvas pages look really interesting. And I throw divs around a lot in my videos, but I've never created a video that's really dedicated just to the div. And so today I want to cover divs and how I can utilize them in canvas. So let's start with some basics. Here I have a page and the page has a bunch of text on it. And this is what a lot of canvas pages looks like. There might be a title, there might be some words. And suppose I want to emphasize it. What, what can a div do for this content? So the first thing I can do is I have all this content here. Let's just put a div at the very top and at the very bottom. So I'm going to start with a blank div tag, and then I'm going to put another tag right here. I'm going to close out that div. So now everything is encompassed in that div. And that's what a div is. A div is just an element where you can combine certain content on your page into one group. And so in this case, we're going to talk a lot about how you can style divs. And so style equals and then two quotation marks, and that allows you to do CSS to the div. And here we're going to explore all kinds of different CSS functions that you can incorporate. And right now I'm just going to look at a width. So I'm going to say right now the words span the entire width of the screen, and maybe I want them to only span 800 pixels. And so you notice this is the beginning of the div. The end of the div isn't until the end. So all of the paragraphs in between are going to be 800 pixels. And so let's go ahead and save that and see what that looks like. It's going to have a little bit of white space here, but then you'll notice that the images, the, the words don't span the entire width of the page. And if I close this down, you can see that's 800 pixels. And the advantage to me doing something like that is that if the words span the entire width of the page and it's a very large monitor, then that can actually affect readability. It's harder to read really long lines of text. And if you break it up even 600, 800 pixels wide, then that can really make a difference for your readers. It can help them to read a little bit more. And something that's interesting is I can say that's a width of, well, let's just uh, play around and say that's a width of 50%. And then when I toggle out here to the rich content editor, you can see it only takes up 50% of the width. And if I change the size of the screen, then you can see that that 50% translates into a different width in terms of pixels because the larger screen, 50% is going to be larger than on a smaller screen. But one thing I can do is I can say, well, let's put that at 100% of the width. So it's going to span the entire width of the page, but let's also put a max width. And so I'm going to do max dash width, and I'm going to put that at 800 pixels, like we were saying. So on small screens, it's not going to matter. It's going to be 100% of the width. On larger screens, if I save this, you can see that that caps off at 800 pixels. And then when I get smaller, then it just takes up 100% of the width of the page. So for small screens like a cell phone, this equals 100% of the width. And then as the screen gets larger, it stops at 800 pixels. And so that's one way that you can use a div at the high level and format the entire width of your page. Suppose your canvas page, you don't want anything to be wider than 800 pixels. Sometimes I do that. And so then you can put that styling right there. Now suppose I have all this text and I want this particular paragraph to be distinct somehow. Now in the rich content editor, I'm limited in what I can do. So I can add a margin or two maybe, or maybe I want to decrease that margin. I can bold it if I want. Maybe I'll put some highlighting behind it and I'll make the text a light color. And so I can do something like that. Maybe make the font a little bit larger, but I'm a little bit limited. And I don't like the highlighting effect. I really want a background color. I want this block of text to really stand out. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm going to hop over here and delete all the styling that I just did and the span that I just did. We're going to keep the paragraph. And instead, what I'm going to do is create a div. And so let's take this one paragraph and let's play around with it using the div. So first of all, I'm going to create a div and I'm going to delete the paragraph. You can keep the paragraph. You can have multiple paragraphs within the div. I'm just going to focus only on this block of text. And so I have a div and right now that's not going to look like anything different. It just looks like a regular paragraph because I haven't styled anything. And that's where I can start. So I'm going to style it, style equals, put a couple of quotation marks, and this is where I can start having fun. 
let's go ahead and maybe start by putting a background color. So I'm going to do background dash color and then you can choose a color from the internet. I'm gonna grab this color right here and oh, let's just see what that looks like. So first off, I have, a, I have my background color and that's different than the highlighting because I'm not highlighting the individual lines, it's highlighting the entire box. And that doesn't look good because there's not enough contrast. So let's change the color of the text and I'm gonna put that color just as white. And so that way we can see the words. So now I have a dark background and I have light text and I'm not getting flagged by the accessibility checker. And so that's a good thing. Right now it's a box and it has sharp corners here. I wanna soften those corners up a little bit. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a border radius. So border radius, and here I can choose a percentage or a pixel number. So let's start with something kind of extreme. Let's go with a border radius of 50% and see what that looks like. So now you can see that's not gonna work for me. And it essentially takes that border and it creates um, very round edges. And so there's 50%. Let's try something a little more subtle, like 10%. So yeah, 10% doesn't look great either. What I really want is not a percentage, but I want to round out um, the corners in pixels. And so I'm going to go to 10 pixels instead. And that's probably what I'm going to, to stay with. So it's just very subtle. I could even go down to five pixels. Let's go up to something a little bit more extreme just to see what that does. What does 70 pixels do? So 70 pixels really rounds out the edges there. And of course it's gonna look different based on the size of the screen. And so that rounding effect looks different on a small screen. Let's look at that small screen. And it's kind of like a square with very round corners. And let's bump this up. I'm going to say, let's say something very modest, like five pixels, the difference between 70 pixels and five pixels. Five pixels is incredibly subtle. It's just the corners aren't very sharp. They're just slightly rounded off. And so I kind of like that effect. Now you notice that the words come right up against the edge. And if you've seen a few of my videos in the past, then you'll know that I'm a big fan of padding. And so let's add some padding to this div. So far we have a background color, we have the text color, we have the radius right there. Now I'm going to put just a little bit of padding, let's say 10 pixels, just because I don't want the words to go right up against the edge of you know the border of the box right there, which is the div. And so 10 pixels might be good. You might find yourself wanting something more like 20 or 15 pixels. And so that just gives it a little bit of breathing room. It gives the text a little bit of breathing room so it's not crowding the edges. And you might also want a margin. So you notice uh, before I was indenting, so I can indent, now that I have the div, it's indenting the text inside the div. And that's not what I want. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna put a little bit of a margin. Let's start with just a regular margin of perhaps 25 pixels. So what that does is it puts space between the top and the bottom and the next content, the left and the right. But maybe I don't want content in the, I actually think that looks good. But if I wanted only an indent, then what I would do is instead of margin, I'll put margin left. And you could put margin top, margin right, or bottom, if you wanna specify one area of margin from another. And let's bump that up to 35 pixels, just so it's a little bit more obvious. So now I eliminated the top margin, the bottom, the right, but I do have that margin on the left here. So a little bit of an indent. I wanna take a pause real quick just to recognize my Patreons. These are the people who have donated to this YouTube channel using the thanks button right there. You can give thanks and contribute. And this really helps me as I am producing the content and I really appreciate it. So I'm going to make some room for all of my Patreons here. These are the awesome people who are helping me to stay current and that I can upgrade my equipment and that I can really dedicate to this hobby. I really like reaching out to professors and teachers and giving them the resources that they need to make their Canvas courses awesome and to really dress up their content for their students. I think it makes a difference. You think it makes a difference. And so consider contributing also. Now let's jump back into the content. Now let's back up a little bit and let's play around with the width. You remember how I was playing the width with this original one? I'm going to put in some width right here and I'm going to say, 
I'm going to put a width of maybe 75%. Now that's going to be 75% of this div up here. And so it's still going to be 800 pixels wide. And then this new column is only going to be 75% of 800 pixels, which turns out to be about 600 pixels or so. And the margin, instead of having a margin on the left, I'm going to put margin auto. And what that's going to do is essentially center it. So now I have my box. This is 800 pixels. Again, this is 75% the width of 800 pixels and it's centered. So there's an equal margin on the left and on the right. Now let's keep going with the styling. We're having a lot of fun here, I think. So we have this centered and now I'm going to put a border around it. So you can do border colon and then you're going to want three elements. You're going to want the size, the style and the color. So for size, let's go with six pixels. I think that'll be fun. For the style, you can do dotted, you can do striped, you can do solid, and I'll go ahead and do solid for now. And since the box is a blue, I'm gonna keep it blue, but I'm just gonna do a different shade of blue. So now you can see my border on this div. It's a solid line, it's six pixels wide, and it's blue. And I can change all of that up if I wanted. I could do 15 pixels, and I can have this be dotted if I wanted to. So that's kind of fun too. I think I'm going to go ahead and keep that as a solid line, but there's definitely some fun to be had. Now there's a couple of ways that I can change the font size here. If I wanted to, I can highlight all of this. It's at 12 points. I can go ahead and make that 18 points. And when I look at the code, what that did is it doesn't really affect the div itself. What it does is create a span and then it creates styling for the span and a font size of 18 point. In my case, I actually want to grab that. I'm going to delete the span altogether. And so we've returned it to the regular font size. And then I'm going to paste in that font size, 18 point right here. And you can either do 18 points, you can do EM, I could do 20 pixels. And so then I can make that a little bit bigger. If you want this content, this paragraph to really jump off the screen, then those are some approaches that you can do. Put it in a div, make it bigger, make it off-centered a little bit, just really make it novel. Now let's tinker with one more thing for that background effect. One thing that we looked at before is how to do different background effects for Canvas pages in general. And I can apply that to this particular div. So I'm going to delete the background color. And so now there's no longer background color which is a problem because the text is white, but we're going to go ahead and add a different background color. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in background image and linear gradient, and we're gonna create a linear gradient. And I've talked about this in a previous video. I'll link to it up in the corner there. And I'm gonna put this at 180 degrees, so it's gonna to be top and bottom, and then I'm gonna just pick two colors and we're gonna make that the gradient. I need to delete that space, and then we're gonna take a look at how this appears on the page. So now that looks interesting. The only thing I don't really like right now is the border color. So let's go ahead and pick a different border color. I'm gonna grab that first color right here and copy that, just paste it into my browser. And all I'm gonna do is take that same color and just find a darker alternative to that. So I'll go ahead and copy that. And I'm gonna go ahead and replace the border with the new border color. And so let's go ahead and save that and see what that looks like. Yeah, so it's not perfect, but that really jumps off the screen, I feel. There's a lot of text on the page, but then this one really distinguishes itself more than the others. And so we styled that all using the one div. And let's look at another thing here, which is floating the content. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're going to um, reduce the width of that from 75%. I'm gonna reduce it to actually maybe 33%, I don't know, maybe 45%, it doesn't really matter. And then I'm gonna add another line down here, which is float. And if you've never floated anything, it's actually pretty fun. In this case, I'm gonna float it to the right. And instead of having the margin as auto, which means it's centering it, I'm specifically trying to float this to the right. And so what I'm gonna do is put margin left, margin dash left, and then I'm gonna add some padding to the left. And I'm gonna add 25 pixels of padding. And let's see what that does. So now I have all of my text and this box is floating right to the right. And then the other text comes up to the left. And I'll save this so we can see it in the real environment, what that looks like. So there it is floating to the right. 
If you wanted it to float to the left, then you can do that. So instead of float right, I'm going to float left. In this case, I don't want the margin on the left because what that's going to do is going to put 25 pixels to the left and then on the right, all the words are going to brush right up against the div and I don't want that. And so I'm going to go ahead and change that from left to right. And that's the only thing I'm really going to change there. Go ahead and save this and take a look. So now I have my content and it's floating to the left. I'm going to go ahead and um, let's just see what that looks like on the different pages. And you can see yeah, it's taken up about half of the page there and it just adjusts. So it doesn't look so great. I think it's a little bit too much text really for that to be floating. I probably wouldn't float text like this, but I might float an image or something. If I wanted to replace all these words with just an image, then that would work as well. So these are some really creative aspects that you can use with div to dress up the content of your pages. If you're interested in how to decorate the background of your canvas image, which also uses divs, then I go into detail with that and we explore a lot of really advanced techniques for creating different background effects for canvas pages. And I'm going to show that video right here, right oh, about, yeah, I'll, I'll place it right about there, how to create amazing canvas LMS background effects. It's uh, definitely one of my favorite videos that I've done recently, and there's a lot of cool tips and tricks. So check it out and continue exploring with me. And until next time. Happy Disney morning.